so Korea Grand Prix on the horizon, and um, you know, it's, a, it's a, a new venue to us. This is our third time going there, but it's still it's got its uh, some of the newnesses of, of new races that we have to attend um, deal with. The circuit, you know, it's a conventional sort of layout done by Tilka, who's done a lot of the Grand Prix tracks in recent years. Um, has a very long straight, um, probably I think may even be one of the longest in the, on the season. Um, it's got a nice flow about it on the rest of the track, uh, and the tr unfortunately, well it's not unfortunately, but the track is a long way from Seoul, so um, it's a little bit remote to what we probably would normally do with uh, Grand Prix, but yeah, you know, it's, it's an interesting place to go, and uh, because we don't go to Korea very often, it's uh, every year's another another year for us. So. so obviously pit stops now without refueling have become a, a very crucial part. I mean even with refueling it was crucial but you used to have a little bit more time because you had to put X amount of fuel in. The flow rate was determined by the amount of flow that the rig could actually achieve um, and now that's all gone and now we obviously just do tyres only. Um, the Pirelli tyres have thrown up a few challenges because the degradation you know, though we get a read on it on the Friday and maybe on the Saturday morning, come the race, sometimes it doesn't quite pan out as we'd as we'd thought. You know, maybe the tyre can go longer or shorter, um, and, and and so that's sort of thrown in the challenge of having a, the fastest pit stop possible. There's some teams in the pit lane, <coughs> obviously bigger teams than we are, who who have you know clearly spent a lot of um, time and, and money and, and, and resource into improving it to a point now where it's you know it's very impressive. And as a small team, you know, we, we aspire to be a big team one day and, and, you know, our performance of the car, as it improves, we want to make sure that we are in a position that when we get, a, you know, a chance of scoring points and then podiums and race wins, that we are completely on, you know, on, in tune with the other teams. So with this in mind, we spent a lot of time, particularly this year, I mean, you know, since it's part of the team, we've, we've spent a lot of time, but it's, it's started to become a more, of a, more of a manageable package now that the team's become stable that um, we spend a lot of time on equipment and personnel uh, to achieve, you know, a stop. If we can get sort of a sub three second stop, then, you know, we'd be very happy. And at the moment, we are very close to achieving that. And I think the last race we just did, we achieved four stops in a row that were the best that we'd achieved as a team, which, you know, clearly shows momentum and it shows that the guys' confidence are up. The equipment's changed slightly. We've, you know, we, we make improvements in sockets and improvements in jacks and, and procedure. Um, but you can never stop learning, you can never stop pushing on. I mean, we've got traffic light system coming very soon, which is what most of the majority of the teams sort of the other end of the pit lane have got. Um, and we, you know, that'll shave a few tents off. Uh, we have some new wheel sockets coming, but it's, it's, it's an ongoing um, uh, progression or sort of trend, if you like, to improve. A lot of it is human being, you know, we have to, the guys have to believe in what they're doing and have the confidence in what they're doing. And for sure this year, and particularly in the last, couple of three months we've you know we've managed to install that in them you know and, it's, and, and mistakes happen we see it all the time and it's okay to fail you know it's it's, it's not what you want but it, it happens and there's no point in trying to overanalyze it because when you're trying to do something like a wheel change in three seconds if you actually break that down to the time they have to to make a mistake it, it's it's a very yeah it's a very difficult situation so just try and keep people calm working on the sort of you know the slow as fast as I always say over the radio to the boys because at the minute you try to push it then you go slower and you start sort of grabbing at things and snatching at wheel nuts and wheel nuts fall out of wheel guns so it, it, mentally it's as much of a challenge as equipment. Okay so with pit stops you know with the equipment and the ongoing progression to improve we've um, got some new equipment with uh, quick release front and rear jack and this is basically it, it removes one of the motions that we would have to do if we didn't have it so that the front end guy or the rear end guy on the jack would pull Obviously, in the, in, as everybody probably understands, the jack to the ground to lift the car. But instead of having to release the car by pushing the jack back up to, to a full arc of lowering the car back to its wheels, we just have a handle on the jack that we pull. And that has a quick release mechanism down at the jack base. And that, that basically just snaps open and allows the car to fall uh, un, un sort of supported, if you like, uh, to the ground. And then the guy can just pull the jack away. Um, you know, opposed to probably a standard jack where you'd have to go through both mo motions of pulling it down and then lifting it back up. You know, we'd probably save ourselves in the region of you know, a couple of tenths, maybe half a second. And also, there's a safety aspect of it that the guy can pull the handle and literally run because the guy at the front is, is the target, so it's him that's going to stop the car from leaving the box. So, and the same, it's the same with the rear jack, we're exactly the same reasons. It's a slightly different design, obviously, for the rear of the car, um, but the whole theory and process is pretty much identical. Uh, on pit stops, we have uh, 
the chief mechanic controls the car during the stop and pr primarily he is there for safety um, but also the pressure comes on him as well that when the car is ready to be released that he releases as fast as he can. Uh, so as I said earlier we have a majority of the pit lane now using a traffic light system so there is no longer a lollipop man although there, he stands there with a, an override button if anything goes wrong where he can stop the car leaving the actual pit box. We actually used to use a physical lollipop which is you know it's part of what's been used for the last probably Grand Prix since the day it started. Um, but what we have done is a, is a slight innovation which um, I think a couple of teams may have, may have done as well as added an LED light system to the lollipop. So it used to be the light lollipop would go down and it would be written actually on the physical lollipop brake, which means for the driver to stop and hit the brakes. And then after a prescribed time of two, three seconds, whatever it was, you would turn the lollipop over and on the other side it would say first gear and revs, which basically means select first gear and go revs up. And then you, when the stop was finished, you would lift the lollipop and the car would drive away. To cut down on one of the motions of turning the lollipop over, we've gone for a double LED system. So we have a red light, which obviously is just like a traffic light system you would see on the road. It would go bright red, the car stops. When the car stops, the driver watches the lights. When it gets to the prescribed time of one and a half seconds and the wheels are actually gone on back onto the car, the chief mechanic will then physically flick a very simple switch. The lights go from red to orange, very bright LED orange light, which means revs up. He raises the RPM of the engine in first gear and then he waits for the lollipop to be lifted. As soon as the lollipop's lifted, he should drive away. So with uh, pit stops in mind and going off to Korea now, um, we, Korea last year threw up some, some unusual weather, if you like, where it rained a lot. And with, these, with, the, with the sort of rain um, risk in Korea, because obviously it's a circuit right on the edge of the coast of the ocean, um, pit stops are very important, as they are in all races, but you know, when you start getting into a situation where you start on dry tyre, then you've got to swap to an intermediate and possibly a wet, and maybe back to an intermediate and then back to a dry, there's a lot of pit stops. And in races where there are lots of pit stops, like Korea and possibly Spa in years gone by, the, the, the t pit stop time has to be accurate and it has to be consistent. And the more time you lose, obviously, in the pit lane, the more time you lose on track. And it's very easy to lose a second in the pit lane. It's very difficult to make a second back up back on the circuit. So the you know the pit stops are starting to become very crucial. They always have been, but obviously as a team we're trying to progress. Um, we work very hard to make sure that you know, particularly in the last few months, that it's consistency that the engineers can work with. And if they can work with a three and a half second stop, stop after stop after stop, and then when they do their strategies and have their strategy meetings. Um, they are very easy to work in. It's when the pit stops become inconsistent and you maybe have a four and a half and a three and a, you know, that, that's when it becomes very hard and then, like I say, you know, to lose a second in the pit lane is very easy to do, but to actually try and make that second back up on track is incredibly difficult when, you know, cars are lapping within a couple of tenths of each other. So um, for Korea, for definitely pit stops are very important and if we have the rain risk, which we probably expect again this year based on the calendar so far where it's rained everywhere we've been, um, yeah, then for sure, we, you know, we'll, we'll put a lot of attention into that on the Thursday and Friday and Saturday morning pit stop practice and make sure that we hit our targets.